Okay, now that we've introduced networking, let's take a little look at how this actually works or, or how the addressing of this works. Let's say, remember first off the definition of networking. Definition of networking, the goal is to get messages or information from one end device to another end device. Now here, if the information remains within our own little network, that's fairly simple. But if we need to get to somebody in New York, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Now remember the devices. You should have known these symbols or seen these symbols. This device is a switch. Our end device is plugging the switches. This device is a router. The router, as its name implies, routes. It's going to route information across a wide area network to another router who's going to get the information to an end device eventually through another switch. So if this end device wants to send a message or information to this device, he has to know how to get there. He has to know the address, if you will, of that device. So all of our devices on the internet, believe it or not, have a unique address. Every device has an address that is unique from any other address. That is the only way this thing can work. So give me a second here to wipe the board clean. Let's take that information and look at the addressing scheme. You've seen this in your little lecture on dotted decimal. An address looks very similar to this. Okay, dotted decimal. This is how we address things on the network. Now, this is a hierarchical addressing type scheme. Part of this address refers to a network address, and part of it refers to an individual host. So we divide the network into two pieces network and host. The network portion of this address always comes from the left. So whatever portion of this is at is network from the left. Whatever portion is network, whatever is left is host. Now I just arbitrarily divided it into two bytes each, or two octets, or two dotted decimal numbers each. But in the scheme of things, historically, classfully, and all routers still are inherently classful, we had three classes of addressing. We had class A, class B, and class C. A class A address used the first byte as host. Oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm leading you down the garden path already. Nope, the first byte was network. The last three bytes were a host address. Now, let me pick these up. Let's think about what that means. Okay, if I have one byte or eight bits as my network portion, how many networks can I make out of that? You remember from your dotted decimal, one dotted decimal number can be anywhere from 0 to 255. Okay, the formula for finding out how big a number you have based on the number of bits you have is this, 2 to some power, and that power is the number of bits you're using. So let me put up this little chart here to give you a little better uh, understanding, a little better help. 2 to the 0 power equals 1. 2 to the 1 equals 2. 2 to the 2 equals 4. 2 to the 3 equals 8. 
let's stop there because this should be fairly self obvious. Uh, obvious. How do we? How does this two to the three translate? Go back to your math 101. This 2 to the 3 is actually 2 times 2 times 2. The number in the exponent is how many times we multiply 2 by itself. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 to the 4th power, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 16. But you'll notice it doubles every time we go up. It follows the same logic we use with dotted decimal. So if I have 8 bits here, 2 to the 8th power equals how many numbers I can make out of that. 256. Okay. Now you're going to say, wait a minute, you told me the biggest number I could get from a dotted decimal is 255. Well, that's correct, but we're dealing with 1 through 255, but you must not forget 0. Zero is also a number in that range. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, up to 255 is 256 different numbers. So in a class A address, we had the ability to have 256 different numbers for our network portion. This was network. Now in class B, we took two bytes for our network portion. 8 bits plus 8 bits, 16 bits, 2 to the 16th power. 2 to the 16th power, as you're going to find out if you use your calculator, is approximately 64,000. Now I've rounded that. There's, you know, each kit or each thousand is actually 1,024. So 64 times 1,024 would be the correct answer. But you can round it generally, unless you get, need to get very, very close, you can round it to 64,000. So we had 64,000 possible network addresses with a class B. Class A, we only had 256, one byte. This was good. These addresses were passed out to the big companies. General Electric, IBM had number nine. The post office had 50-something, I believe. This is all in your curriculum. But these were very, very large companies and ISPs that were controlling these addresses. They realized that they needed a lot more networks, so they came out with Class B. First two bytes are now network. That's 16 bits. I could get 64,000 addresses. Class C, the first three bytes became network. 8, 16, 24. 24 bits. That's 2 to the 24th power. 2 to the 24th power in your calculator is approximately 16 million. Now I can get 16 million different network numbers out of those three bytes, class A, class B, and class C. Now, that takes care of the network portion. Let's look at the host portion. Now, remember, I had one byte for my host portion in class A. Uh, excuse me, for my network portion in class A. That means I'm going to have three octets left over for my host portion. But what is different here? Not much. It's still considered a dotted decimal number, but we can convert it to binary or we can convert it to bits. Eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, that's 24 bits. So in a class A network, we have 2 to the 24th bits or 2 to the 24th addresses available that can be described by 24 bits. What was 2 to the 24th again? Approximately 16 million. So each one of those big companies that had one, host, one network portion or one byte for a network 
could have 16 million different hosts in each of those networks. Now the class B, where we had two network bytes, we had two left, therefore, for the host. 8, 16. We can have 2 to the 16th, which, remember, is about 64,000. Okay? Now, oops, drop the green. Getting to class C, remember we had three octets that were network. So we only had one left over for the host. Eight bits. Okay? Two to the eighth power equals 256. This was classical or classic class full addressing that we used for years and years and years, but we're running out of address spaces. And here's why. Let's say I'm a company. I come in, I have 300 computers. I go to the addressing authority. I say, I need an address. I have about 300 computers. They go, well, you can't have one of these class C because you can only have 256. So we have to give you a class B. 64,000 addresses. I need 300 of them. I've just wasted almost 64,000 addresses. This is very inefficient. This is running, this is causing us to run out of address space. So in the next lecture, we'll go from a classful addressing scheme to a class less addressing scheme.